Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create an ePortfolio using Google Sites. Now, Google Sites is fairly easy to access. All I did was go to Google and type in Google Sites and it brought me to this page that you see right here. Um, I am going to hit create because I want to create my own page here in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to reference the rubric that has been given to me. Step one of your rubric says to title your website. The title of your website should follow as this, Digital Portfolio of, and then your three initials. So let's go to this Create tab, click on it, and then I'm going to select Blank Template, and I'm going to give the name of my website. So again, it is Digital Portfolio, and then your three initials. Portfolio of, let's say my initials are R-E-W. What you've noticed here is that it creates you a unique URL right below as you type in the name of your website. Here I can select a theme and personalize it. There are a lot to choose from, but for the sake of this particular exercise today, I'm just going to randomly choose one. And the one I'm going to choose will be the, okay, garden. I like that one. And I need to click this button that says I'm not a robot. You can add a site description here if you so choose. Um, it would be likely something like ePortfolio or classroom website or something along those lines. So I'm going to go back up to the top here and hit create. And um, it's just going to take a moment for Google to create my website. But in the meantime, let me reference my rubric again. I have given the title of my website for step one, and actually I've already done step two. I chose blank templates, and then I chose a theme for my template. Now I need to go to step three, which is to turn in my URL address by posting it to the Google Classroom website. If you're in my class, what I would like you to do is, once your um, website is ready, which mine is now, you go to the top where the URL is, copy, and um, then paste that URL into the Google Classroom webpage that I've given you at an earlier time. That way I can find your website and monitor it. Now, uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to actually sign into Google Classroom because um, I want to make this video as short and succinct as possible. But if you're doing this for the first time, you definitely need to get me your, your, your URL. And that's simple by um, simply sub submitting it to Google Classroom. If you go to Website Organization, Step 4 asks you to create a, a home page. And actually, you already have a home page on your website just by default. Everyone does. So um, I need to add some things to my home page. It asks that you add a positive greeting, a description of what you'll find on your website, and a famous slash positive quote to live by um, of a positive influence. So uh, for the sake of time, I've actually created another website that has this information, I'm simply going to copy and paste it. And I don't recommend that you do that normally, but this is something I did actually write myself. I just um, did it very quickly so that this could be a quicker video. So to uh, edit this home page, I need to go to this top button that looks like a pencil almost, and you click edit page, and here I'm going to paste in my information. Now, if I was typing this out, I could add different fonts. I could make it different sizes. I could style size, bold, underline, give it different colors, um, give it a text color of the background. I'm not going to do those things right now. So uh, my home page is almost complete here. I've added my greeting and my quote, but I need to insert a calendar that displays all of my teacher's calendars. Now. Uh, this is very simple because before you've done this video, I will show you how to add my Google Calendar from my website, Devoted Scholar, into um, your homepage. It's very simple, but here is a quick snippet. If you go to Insert, go to Calendars, and then whatever calendars you've encountered and saved to your Google Calendar is going to pop up. Here I'm going to click this button for Assignment Calendar so that it shows up on my homepage. I can, um, determine the different sizes and kind of do some different display options, but I'm just going to go with the default here and go ahead and insert it into my home page. 
I also like to align things in the center. That's just me personally, but you can align it different ways. Um, it's up to you, personal preference. So I've had everything that is required of me on my rubric for this particular stage on the homepage. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay. And here is my information. Now I need to make another page that's called Important Resources Page. And this is a top level page. Now, uh, I don't have this particular page on my website, so I need to add it by clicking Create a Page. It has like this plus sign as a page, so it's pretty obvious. And it needs to be titled Important Resources. Here I have Important Resources. Make sure you spell it correctly because it's going to be saved as your URL and it's difficult to change once you have it set up. Um, you have different options for different kinds of templates. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with web page and I'm going to put it at the top level okay because that's what my web that's what the rubric asked me to do. So I have all this completed. I'm going to hit create and here is my important resources page. Now this is something we're going to add to throughout the school year, but um, just to kind of show you what we can do immediately, I'll go ahead and put Voted Scholar, which is my um, classroom website. I'm going to highlight it and actually link, make sure that it's a link. This is what that kind of, it is literally an image of a link. That's what it does. It shows that you added a link to your web page. It just kind of makes it easier to find if I'm in a hurry. I'm also going to add turnin.com because that is one that we frequent often as well. And I'm going to go ahead and hyperlink that as well. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to hit save. And that's all I'm going to do for this right now. As I said, we'll add to that throughout the school year. If you look at step six, it asks you to make a grade folder. Now, as you guys know, I do teach 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. And so I added all these options because all my classes are going to be using Google um, portfolios. But... Um, for the sake of this particular video, I'm going to pretend like I'm a ninth grader and make a ninth grade folder. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and create another page. Okay, it's fairly simple to the last process, but I'm going to title it different. I'm going to say ninth, or I'm going to just say ninth grade folder. And then I'm going to stick with web page as well. And this is where it gets a little bit different. I'm going to kind of put it as a underneath. Um, Actually, no, I'm not going to put it underneath anything. I'm going to keep it at the top. Take that back. Okay, that's for the next step. step. So, put page at top, web page, ninth grade folder. If you're 10th grade, you put 10th grade folder. 11th grade, you put 11th grade folder. 8th, you put 8th grade folder, and so forth. I hit create. And now I should have a ninth grade folder page. Uh, now, I need to... Uh, it says, on this page, list at least three positive goals for this school year. Um, again, I did this on a different web page, just um, as a get it done with already. So I'm going to just simply copy and paste these things. But like I said before, I don't think I need to copy and paste your goals from the Internet. Your goals should be unique to you. So one of my goals is that um, the school year successfully flipped my class. Uh, another goal is um, to improve my classroom website. And a third goal is to help my students raise their ACT scores for English and reading. Now, you may be wondering what this beige background is. That's just because I'm copying and pasting it from the other Google sites. If you directly type into here, it's not going to, well, it's going to show up now, but it wouldn't show up otherwise. Okay, so don't worry about that if you don't like that. So I have my three goals. I'm going to go ahead and save this folder. Okay, hit save. I gotta get quick. All right, now I'm ready to create my subfolders. So again, I have to uh, go to create page. And on this page, I'm gonna start with ACT prep. I'm gonna title it ACT prep because that's the thing we're gonna focus on this year. And this is where it gets a little bit different than the other pages. I'm going to give it a certain destination underneath the grade 9 folder. Okay, so it's kind of like a sub folder within this particular folder. So 
So I click on this and I'm going to hit create. And now I have APT prep underneath my ninth grade folder. I need to hit save. We'll add information to this as we go along, but right now we don't need to create another page. The next page I need to create is grammar. And again, I'm just referencing my rubric. And I'm going to put this under ninth grade folder. And I don't want to put it under ACT prep. I want to put it under ninth grade. So make sure you keep hitting that. Otherwise, this is going to keep going as a subfolder continuously. We don't want that. Hit create. Make sure that this is correct. OK. Yep. Hit save. Let's add another folder within here, another page, I should say. The next one is speaking and listening. Uh, web page is going to go under, again, ninth grade folder, so we need to just update this. And then again, hit create. Fairly simple. Let's just check that it showed up on the right place on my navigation. It did. Hit save. Okay, let's add another page here. The next page that we need to add is writing. Okay. Okay, let's put it under here. Select a different location again. We're looking under ninth grade. Hit create. Reading. Okay, again, let's create another page. I believe the last one is reading, last but definitely not least. Again, let's change the location so it goes under my three folder. Let's hit create. Same story, we're going to hit save again. And again, we're just setting this up so that it's ready to go when we use it later in the year. Okay, uh, next you have an about me page, which I believe we we have not created that yet. Okay, so we're going to create an about me page again. Um, this is going to be a top level page and it asks you to uh, find, label, and insert pictures of three different goals you hope to achieve in the next five years. It also asks you to insert a video that personally inspires you and it asks you to add a hyperlink to a web page that reflects some aspect of your personality. It should be a page that you visit often. So I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, I'm going to title it about me. Again, I don't want you guys to give out any information that's going to like identify. Oh, I'm going to put this at the top of the page. I don't want you guys to create, give out any information that is going to give away anything that is going to make you unsafe. So never give out your address, your full name, you know, your social security number, nothing like that. Okay. So one of the requirements for the about me page is to insert some pictures. I'm just going to show you for the sake of time how to insert an image. Um, you can upload images. You can get them from the URL. I'm just going to click one. Okay. Uh, here's one of me. I'm just going to upload really quick. And this is not necessarily a goal about myself. But this is a picture I often use on my website. So this might be representative of the fact that I want to improve my website. Okay, it's uploading. I hit OK. Ooh, that's big. <laughs> uh, but anyway, okay, so you're going to select three video, uh, th three images and, and label them. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to show you how to insert a video. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to insert one from YouTube. And I have already pre-selected this video, this kid president. I love him, and I love this video about 20 things we should say more often. I'm going to add that into the hyperlink and paste it right here. I can select the video size. I can title it. I would normally title it, but for the sake of time, I'm going to skip that right now because I'm really trying to make this under 15 minutes so I don't have to do another video. Okay. The last thing you have to add is a hyperlink um, of a website that you really like. You can do that very easily. I've shown you how to do that, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, step 10 asks you to change at least three different things about your website to make it uniquely yours. And um, there's a bunch of different things. You can add photos, different links, kind of play around with it. 
So thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this is helpful and not confusing. And I look forward to seeing your, your website. Thank you.